Hey, what's up guys? So I've been in Vancouver for the past couple of weeks and I've been using the Canon M100 a lot as my main vlogging camera here. So I thought I would bring you guys a video review of my experience in using this camera as a vlogger's camera. I'm gonna be splitting up this video into four different topics, mainly for ergonomics, the controls, the video, and, and the battery of the camera. Starting with ergonomics, it's super handy to have a flip screen on your camera because when you're vlogging, this will allow you to frame up your shot a lot easier. Well, you can also see what will be in focus or out of focus. Generally, as a vlogging camera, you wanna be able to take it around to different places and it's a lot easier to take around if your camera is gonna be smaller and lighter. So the size and weight of this camera is generally a very positive thing because it'll allow you to bring your camera in places where you wouldn't really wanna bring a larger setup. This camera uses a card slot on the left-hand side of the camera and this is super handy so that you can pull out your media without having to open the battery card slot. This is especially useful when you have a larger tripod plate on the bottom. So this will save you the extra step of removing the tripod plate to open the battery door. I've been using this camera with the Peak Design POV clip which sets the camera up on a plate that has a little tilt up and tilt down. This is especially useful if I just want to use it as a secondary grip on the camera, as well I use it to clip onto the Peak Design capture clip. As for controls, we have the record button on top, just right beside the shutter, and I find this a very convenient spot to have it, so you don't have to have any guesswork when you're facing the camera towards yourself. There's a mode switch on the camera, which allows you to have everything in just fully auto, or you can switch to the photo mode as well as the video mode, which is nice because this makes it so that you don't have so many options you have to fiddle around with when you just want to take some video. I really enjoy that this camera gives you the ability to use a crash zoom. And for those of you who don't know what that is, is essentially when you can just manually zoom the lens in a lot quicker than you would with a traditional power zoom in, for example, a point and shoot camera like the Canon G7X. There's a control dial on the top of the camera right next to the shutter. And to be honest, I thought this would be a lot more handy. I feel like the implementation that Canon chose to do it on this camera was a little bit lacking. You can technically change the exposure settings using that dial when you're shooting video, but it's kind of locked while you're shooting video, so you have to tap the screen in order to get to the exposure adjustment. I understand why they did this because if it was too easy to just knock the exposure, then that can really ruin your shot. However, I feel like it would have been better if they had a manual button or switch that would lock it. That way, when you're holding the camera and you're vlogging, then you wouldn't have to adjust your grip to touch the screen and then go back to the control dial to use it. The touch screen on this camera is super handy to control your autofocus. And this makes it simple to adjust your focus when you're out and about and filming other things. I do wish that the power button was a little bit bigger at the top of the camera because I find that occasionally if I'm not able to look at the camera and I want to turn it on, there's nothing that physically moves in the camera so that I know that it's on and ready to use so I still have to glance at it. Whereas with a point and shoot, the lens extends or retracts with a button. So there's no second guessing whether your camera's on or off. As for video quality on this camera, it's very comparable to the other EOS M cameras in this lineup. You do have the option of shooting video in manual, however, using this more as a vlogging camera and shooting more documentary style footage, I'll generally shoot with auto because I don't want the burden of having to think about my settings and whether or not my exposure is correct. I just want to be able to shoot and go. I'm a really big fan of the improved autofocus on the Canon M100 over the previous version of this camera. This camera features Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is really well known in the camera industry to be one of the best, if not the best, video autofocus system. It is also the same system that Casey Neistat used on his Canon 70D way back in the day when the whole GorillaPod DSLR and shotgun mic setup was a thing. This camera shoots 1080p up to 60 frames per second, but normally I'll be switching between 1080p 60 frames and 30 frames. And to do this, I found it incredibly handy to have that switch between photo and video mode so that my default in photo mode would be 30 frames per second 
and my default in video mode would be 60 frames per second. I think this is a huge improvement over the way I would have shot it on something like a point and shoot like the Canon G7X because in that camera there are so many different settings and ways to customize the camera that I wouldn't really remember if I have the setting on 30 frames or 60 frames. Also having fewer items on the dial means that there's less that I have to think about. This camera uses interchangeable lenses and that's right, that means you can switch out this lens for something like a longer lens or you can get a ultra wide angle lens that a lot of vloggers like to do. This makes it so that if you're holding the camera out in front of you, then you'll get a wider field of view and you can see more of your surrounding area. I generally just stick to this regular kit lens because of its compact nature and its versatility if I do want to go out and shoot and document things. But you definitely have that option to change into a different lens if you want something with a shallower depth of field, such as using the 22mm f2. Unfortunately, there is no external mic jack, which means that you cannot connect external audio directly to the camera. And this means that, well, you can either sync the audio in post or you can just use the regular onboard audio, which is, I find is okay for everyday shooting. But it might be harder to hear the, the microphone if you're in louder areas. So maybe just bring the camera a little bit closer to you uh, and speak into it that way. In windier situations, I would recommend using a small little dead cat cover over this mic, over the onboard microphone, because this will prevent the wind from actually getting into the mic and making it so that your audio is just unhearable. Lastly, in talking about battery life, the battery for this camera is pretty small. Um, physically and the actual amount of shots you're able to get out of it. I tend to not shoot as aggressively as I did when I had my Canon G7X, so I don't actually switch the battery out that frequently. Um, I'm able to get through a day of light to moderate use without having to change the battery, so it's been working okay for me. However, if you're just starting out and you want to film everything, um, by all means, you should definitely buy a extra battery, uh, maybe like an extra battery charger. The battery charger that I have charges two batteries at once, so if I do run through both of them, then I can just throw them in the charger. Um, and it uses micro USB, which is super handy because you can also charge it with a portable power bank. That being said, the camera itself doesn't actually support USB charging. Um, it still has a mini USB port and that means that you have to take out the battery if you want to charge up the camera. This is pretty inconvenient if you do have a larger plate at the bottom of your camera. I found that the biggest plate you can go up to is something like the Joby Gorillapod plate at the bottom. If you put anything bigger like a Arca Swiss plate, then you won't be able to open the battery door and you'll just have to unscrew it every time you have to recharge, which can be a little bit annoying. But I would still say this is a huge upgrade over point and shoot cameras where they have the tripod mount right beside the battery cover and there's no way you can have a plate on there without taking it off before you charge the battery. Last comment about the battery is that there's no battery percentage. This is incredibly annoying. Um, for cameras made up until this point, the lower end model tended to not have battery percentage. Um, and it's a very simple thing. I'm sure they could add it in. For some higher end model cameras, you can check the battery settings in the settings. Uh, however, apparently that option is just not available for this camera. In conclusion, I had a surprisingly good time in using the Canon M100 as my main vlogging camera. And, and it's not much of a departure from the Canon G7X I used before, but overall I really enjoy its little quirks, as well as the improved autofocus and the manual zooming. Would you guys get this camera as your main vlogging camera? Or would you get something more like a compact point and shoot like the Canon G7X, the Sony RX100 model, or the new Sony ZV-1, which is supposed to be designed for vlogging? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys are new here and are interested in videos more like this, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye.